Alrighty, welcome into one giant step. Two weeks out from NFL Draft Day. I am your host, Sean Morash, where you can follow me on Twitter at Mraz CBS M A M R A Z C B S. It'd be bad if I'm giving out my wrong Twitter handle. Remember, if this is your first time listening, thanks for finding us. Subscribe and download anywhere podcasts are available, including free on the Odyssey app. You're gonna to want to do that over the next two weeks as one giant step takes you inside the NFL draft and what the Giants will do with the number. 25 pick and beyond a very special draft and hero related guest coming up former Giants kicker two-time Super Bowl champion the only kicker in NFL history to connect on two game winning championship game field goals in overtime to send their team to a Super Bowl that's right Lawrence Tynes will join us how is that draft related well Lawrence Tynes in Kansas City his former uh, place of play before New York he was the Chiefs kicker he will announce the Giants' second round pick from the podium. Kind of get into what his thoughts are. Will he put on a bit of a show? We'll figure that out. We'll talk to Times in just a second. But first, I wanted to start off with two breaking news items. Well, breaking news, so to speak, in the realm of us recording this. We we're recording this on Wednesday, April 12, 2023. And Kim Jones had the first report. And it's become the big football story of the day, which shouldn't come as much of a surprise, but still worth digging into. And that is that Saquon Barkley has decided to not sign the franchise tag, at least before these off-season workouts begin, the voluntary workouts that are set to begin. And I, for one, am not surprised. Okay, Saquon Barkley reports say he was offered upwards of $12.5 million per year, which now, I mean, he looks foolish for not taking if you've paid attention to the running back market. I mean, you've seen a frustrated Austin Eckler seek out a trade, can't find a trade. There were the reports earlier in the offseason that the Titans were looking to move Derrick Henry. Couldn't find a dance partner there to take on his salary. We obviously saw Zeke get cut. Josh Jacobs has been offered the franchise tag. And the running back market with all of these star running backs, if you play fantasy football outside of knowing who Saquon Barkley is, you know all these names, nobody's getting a big deal. Aaron Jones got brought back at approximately the money that the Saquon franchise deal, franchise tag deal would get. So Saquon basically at $10 million, take it or leave it. That feels like the going rate. That feels like the high mark of what he would get on a contract anyway. So why is this a big deal? I think, look, Saquon Barkley was the first one when the offseason program started or right after the loss to the Eagles to say flat out, he's not looking to reset the running back market. And that would be the $16 million mark that Christian McCaffrey is getting. So that seemed like, okay, Saquon really wants to be here, but not resetting the the running back market could mean I still want $15 million a year, a million dollars less. And clearly if the Giants were offering 12.5, you could figure out the number it was higher than that. The franchise tag is only at 10 mil. And we've seen running backs, you know, play this game before players play this game before. They don't want to play in the franchise tag. They'll hold out as long as possible as a negotiating ploy. Here's the problem. And here's the rub. Saquon still doesn't have any leverage. If he holds out, is he really going to hold out? Does he think that the running back market a year from now, if he really wanted to play the Le'Veon Bell game, which is always going to be the most extreme, where he held out, you know, basically until two thirds of the way through that season with the Steelers, is he really going to play that game? where he thinks that you know his value is going to go up by not playing and that somehow teams are going to be overpaying for running backs even more next year, that's not going to happen. I think the sad reality that Saquon, along with guys like Austin Eckler and Josh Jacobs, are facing is one that I think a lot of fans and some draft analysts have been saying for years. The value of the running back is just down. I mean, it is a, it, it's much easier to find running backs later on in drafts, more so than a lot of positions now in the NFL that you could develop and get on the field pretty quickly to be effective. And a lot of, you know, times a running back by tandem can cost you less money on the salary cap than overpaying for one singular star running back. So I think we all love Saquon, the player. We all love what Saquon did for this team. And there was a point earlier in the year where, you know, he was borderline an MVP candidate as a running back, but we all understand that this giant team and this giant franchise, by the way, has seen it with Tiki Barber in the past. He retires. They go win a Super Bowl with a seventh round pick in Ahmad Bradshaw and a former fourth round pick in Brandon Jacobs. So yeah, I, I don't think Saquon has much leverage here. Now, what this does mean, if the, your punishment to the Giants for pulling the offer and not playing is that you're just not going to show up the voluntary workouts. Well, I got to think that Saquon knows the playbook, even whatever they're going to change now. It shouldn't be that hard for him to pick up whenever he comes in. And if that means he's not on the field, you know, putting himself in danger of, you know, forbid a, a torn ACL or a leg injury, you know, one of these freak offseason workout injuries. Remember the Cam Akers and the Rams had this happen a couple of years ago. That in a weird way is also a win for the Giants. 
they will be fine playing through their practices and figuring out their workouts without Saquon. What's most important is getting Saquon on the field in week one. And push come to shove, I think Saquon will be on the field in week one. So I think this could be a win for the Giants. I'm not sure exactly it's going to be a win for Saquon, but I understand why he would do this. It makes a ton of sense. Uh, I mean, you know, and look, it's just something the Giants are going to have to deal with. In the meantime, Daniel Jones, the leader that he's become, did organize workouts in Arizona, obviously away from team facilities because they're not, you know, legal CBA workouts. And most of the Giants' offense was there, including Saquon Barkley. You saw him throwing passes to Darren Waller. Ben Bredesen, by the way, was the one snapping the footballs. The Giants are in hunt uh, for a center. We heard me talk about that with Bobby Skinner last week. Maybe that is going to be the Giants' answer at center. But, you know, if Barkley's willing to participate in things like that that aren't team-sanctioned, but with his teammates, it tells me he plans on playing football here in September. And there's absolutely no reason Joe Shane should budge on giving Saquon a long-term deal especially, by the way, if it's a long-term deal, it's going to cost them anything more than the franchise tag will of $10 million a year. There's zero reason the Giants should do that, and I think Saquon's got to be smart enough to do that. Now, maybe Saquon be willing to take you know, less money. Are we talking about seven, $8 million, something drastic like that, for more long-term guarantees of three to four years down the road? Could Saquon see the running back market go that way, and that's what he's holding out for? Perhaps, and then that's a different conversation if and when that happens. But as it stands right now, uh, I don't believe the Kim Jones report of Saquon Barkley holding out is anything to panic about, certainly. And I think, frankly, is good business from Saquon's side. I just don't know what he'll win out of this. And possibly a relief for the Giants to not have to worry about an oft-injured running back getting injured in an off-season workout. Uh, and instead, yeah, protect yourself. We'll see you when you're ready to check in. But guess what? You're not getting any more than the $10 million franchise tag. So that's where it stands right now with Saquon Barkley and the Giants. You're breaking news on Wednesday, April 12th here. And ultimately, as the draft approaches, I still also would not be shocked if in those mid to late rounds, a running back is, you know, something that the Giants eye and take uh, as maybe we see the writing on the wall for perhaps this being the final year of Saquon Barkley in a giant uniform. All right, I teased ahead. Upcoming now, an interview with Lawrence Tynes, Giants hero and Giants announcer of their second round pick. All right, and as I've teased, let's welcome in two-time Super Bowl champion, the only kicker to kick his team to two Super Bowls in overtime in championship games, the great Lawrence Times. We can follow him on Twitter, at LT4Kicks. Lawrence, happy draft month. Thanks for joining One Giant Step here, man. Man, I appreciate you having me. Happy draft month. Exciting times, right, for all NFL teams. Everyone's going to win it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this is this is the time that we come alive. Now, before we get into what you're going to do draft night, do you obviously kickers are not typically unless you're Janikowski first, second round picks. Yeah. What was it like for you as a kicker approaching draft month and like the feels? Did you have any feel about whether you mm. would be drafted and, uh, you know, an undrafted free agent? Like, what was that like for you in this buildup? Yeah, you know, I our punter played in the NFL and you guys will know Matt Allen who famously yeah. threw a ball down the field um, <laughs> in a playoff game for the Giants. Good so trivia Matt, answer. Good trivia yeah. answer. So Matt and I obviously went to college together, played together, and we were pretty sought after coming out of college. Um, I thought I was going to get drafted, to be honest with you. I, I think if had I played my cards right, I potentially could have, because teams were calling me in the fourth or fifth round. They're like, hey, oh, wow. have you heard from anybody? Have you heard from anybody? And they were just kind of seeing where everything was. And Thinking back on it, I should have said, oh, yeah, this team called, that team called, you know, just to kind of get them to make a move. But yeah, a little um, so basically by the sixth round, I had a deal in place with the Chiefs uh, tentatively. Obviously, you couldn't sign it until the draft was over. But teams are for undrafted guys. Um, they're starting to put those deals together like sixth, seventh round to see if you'll wow. come priority free agents or whatever is what we call them right now. So. Um, and sometimes in, in hindsight, it's a better situation because then you get to kind of pick. So I had about six teams I chose from, uh, at the end of the draft in 2000. So all worked out. And in that scenario, when you're a kicker, it's a little different than being an offensive lineman, right? Or a wide receiver signing an undrafted free agent deal, because you're playing a position that the team will literally only carry one of you for the most part. So when you say you need have five, six teams, is that generally going through your head? You Do you look at what they have at kicker and go, yeah. where's my best opportunity to be playing in the NFL this year? Yeah, that's what I did. Um, and some guys just have to take their only opportunity. For example, you know, a young guy, the, the Giants will sign a young guy to come into camp and help Graham out a little bit just to take 
take some load off his leg, but you know, you don't really have a chance at, at winning that job. So um, I, I, my, my theory behind it was Todd Peterson was an older aging kicker. Um, the thing I didn't take into consideration when I got here was how deadly accurate he was. <laughs> so uh, he kicked my ass in camp and then I had to go figure it out. But um, yeah, you, that's certainly what you do. You could just kind of vet the opportunity. Think, where can I, where do I think I can go win a job? Yeah, and of course, obviously, rules are a little different now than when you came into the league as far as, you know, more room on the practice squad, stash away kickers yeah. as some of the teams are doing now. There was five guys, Mraz, when I came in. That was practice squad was five people. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's nuts. I mean, I actually think the rules are way better now, to be honest. Way better. It gives guys you know, more opportunities, and, and it should yeah, have always the been like this. Right. It should have always been like this, but uh, I'm telling you, um, that's why practice squad players are elite, right? If you made that five or eight man roster, I think even up until 2011, my 12, my last season, it was only 11 people. So, or eight, I think it was eight. So you're still a pretty elite football player to make a practice squad. Yeah, that, that is absolutely wild. Do you think that more teams should be spending, you know, their six, seventh round picks on kickers, punters, specialty players, uh, you know, kind of that old school thought of just letting them go to be rookie free agents. Because, I mean, let's be honest, as we just mentioned, the impact you had on two of the greatest Giants games of all time was enormous. Kickers constantly have these enormous impacts on games. And it feels like how many of the six, seventh round picks, whether they are, you know, off, I keep mentioning offensive linemen, wide receivers, tight ends. Maybe they float around for a year or two, but they never have as great an impact on the team as a kicker or a punter. I just I'm curious from a kicker's point of view, do you think that more of these late round picks should be spent on the specialty player? Um, I wouldn't. If I if I'm being honest, ah. um, I, I wouldn't draft a kicker, period. Um, if you look at Vinatieri and myself, go through the greats of the game, most of them were undrafted. I mean, they really are. I just uh I wouldn't draft one. I think there's enough guys out there. You got to put them in the right spot, the right situation. Sometimes you can see uh, with drafting guys too high, there's a lot of pressure put on them. If you think of the kid from Florida State, Aguayo, who was supposed to be Mr. Everything in Tampa, I think they took him early. Second round, maybe? Second third, round, maybe. Yeah. yeah. That's really high for a kicker. And then he just didn't deal with the pressure. I guarantee you if he came in as an undrafted free agent, I think he would have – you know, done better. Same thing with Mike Nugent, you know, Jets take him in the second round. Um, he struggled. Obviously Mike had a fantastic career. He's a buddy of mine, but I think the pressure of, of, of a second round pick on a kicker is, is immense. Um, so first of all, right. the fans already hate you, right? Yeah. Exactly. And then you're like, Oh, we took this kid in the second round. But personally, if I'm Joe Shane or I'm a general manager running an NFL team, there's no way I draft a kicker or a punter. All right, with that, the draft, and we're going to chop it up. We're talking with Lawrence Tynes, two-time Super Bowl champion, a little bit on what the Giants have done and, and the Giants going forward. But you have a really unique and special opportunity coming up with the draft in Kansas City. You will be the man announcing the Giants' second-round pick, which, of course, you know we assume is going to be a pick that sticks around for a while and is a starter for this team. So this isn't some kind of throwaway opportunity mm. to announce a kick. Uh First, before we get into any kind of, you know, approach you're going to take on it, you know, how'd you get asked? Was it an immediate, yeah, of course I'm down? And how how cool a moment is this for you? No, it's it's huge, right? I'm an undrafted player, so I've actually never been to a draft. Um, it just so happens it's in Kansas City this year where I live. Um, I was humbled, right? I'm appreciative of the opportunity, but the, the Giants, I mean, that's a big deal. To go out on stage and announce uh, the New York Giants second round pick, welcoming a, a young man to, to New York and his family is going to be a big deal. Uh, the only thing I hope that just doesn't happen is like if they trade the pick and then I'm sitting there in the green room like Aaron Rodgers all day and I'll be like, <laughs> listen, in my contract, I should have made a contract and said, look, Giants, I'm not, I'm not announcing a fourth round pick. Give me the second, maybe the third, right, if they well, trade it. But what if I get to announce maybe a trade? Hey, the Giants have traded their second round pick. That would be they fun. traded back last year, LT. They traded back they? last year. So yeah, Wanda hopefully Robinson they've got some a little later. Yeah, hopefully they got good food or some something in the green room. I'll get after I, it. Look, come out, make sure I'm cleaned up before I come out there on camera. If the draft is in Kansas City and they don't have, you know me with the food. If they don't have good barbecue, food, that is a. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, yeah, you know it'll this be is a, it could be a once in a lifetime event for this city. They better um, have good food. Is that NFL, part of the reason you're still in Kansas City? By the way. Uh, my wife is from Kansas City, so just doing what I'm told. You know, I would love to live in Florida or someone else. But um, 
Uh, the NFL is a little sticky on this. I, I, I emailed him. I said, hey, what's up? I, I've got two boys. I want to bring my my boys to the draft. Like, And you only get one guest. So oh. I'm just announcing to everyone that I'm bringing both my sons and I'm showing up. There's a 0% chance you're going to tell me to go home. So, yeah, But it's well, only one guest. Like, what are we doing? Well, I think two kids equal one guest as an adult, right? Well, they're two kids. They're both bigger than I am. So, um, okay. But, all They're right. 15 years old. So, but I but want still, them to come experience that. It's not like I'm bringing a whole posse with me. It's just my two boys. Look, they're committed to having you announce the second round pick. Now, if they turn you away for bringing in an extra kid, then the NFL is going to look really, really bad. Yeah, and I that's a cool I, moment for your kids, too. A really cool moment. Right? Because they yeah. were probably too young to really appreciate you as a player. Yeah. Uh, I think they were six when I got done. So, um, thank God there's YouTube and things like that. They remember the second Super Bowl. Uh, they were there. They remember remnants i mean they're 15 now uh, obviously not as much as you would like but um yeah i think if i bring them it'll, everything will be fine no one's going to say anything it's just going to be a quick little two-hour deal where i I'm, I'm more interested in meeting some of the other legends that are going to be there i and i don't know who they are but uh right you, you know the other teams will have people fly in and stay here for a couple of days Okay, so this is uh, the money question I wanted to ask you here. We have seen in drafts past with some of these legends, like you mentioned. I mean, the the famous one is Drew Pearson, you know, egging the crowd on as he got booed, announcing the Cowboys pick. You know, there's different ways that you could approach this. Uh, I mean, last year, the Giants, obviously everybody remembers the young man who had the heart surgery who came up, and that was such a cool moment announcing the cave yeah, pick as well. That was cool. Uh, what is the Lawrence Times approach? Are you going like straight down the middle? Hey, here's the second round pick, or do you have a little flavor planned for this? Um, I've kind of went back and forth, right? Because if you think about, remember David Akers unleashed. David yes, Akers, that's right. go, that's go right. YouTube that. That is outstanding stuff. Um, and then Pat McAfee, you know, had some good stuff going. So I've almost got to represent the brand, right? The kickers and punters specialties, right? Um, but again, we're a classy organization. I know I'm representing the New York Giants and all the fans. Um, I'll keep it cool. I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to do anything to embarrass the franchise, but I might have a little fun real briefly, get right to the pick, but I'm not going to go too far on the Yeah, edge. you're not going to come out and do the cave on snow angels on the stage no. and get up new generation of Giants. No, 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 no. Nothing. I got to right, understand. Think, you're, I, representing, I, you're representing the franchise. So I, I You know what I like? Mind. Here's the sell. I mentioned Drew Pearson. You mentioned David Akers. You kind of look at the Cowboys and Eagles and say, let them be the ones that, you know, act like that. We're going to be business like the Giants are back, that kind of deal. Interesting. Yeah. You, do I think I have to go out there and think, would, would Joe Shane and Dave's like what I'm going to do? And maybe they would. I have to kind of wrestle with that before the 28th. So I've got some time. You know, that you know, people have said I look a lot like Dave White. I think that's just more branding with the beard and the bald. It would be yeah. kind of funny for you to throw on a fake I will tell you this, though. I do I do have people. something planned Cigar. with regards to what I'm wearing. So Okay. I'll All leave right. it at that. Uh, yeah, that because that, that could be another technique, right? You know, imitating certain stuff. You know, right. If I came out, I'd look like Dave. It's not a costume, but I think Giants Nation is going to really appreciate what I'm wearing when I come out. All right. So that's a little teaser. Look for what times is going to be wearing on that Friday night to announce mm -hmm. the second round pick. Now and it's not the rings, right? So I'm going to have the rings on, but that's not what it is. It's right. going to be exactly. something. Well, you got to wear the rings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the right. You win the rings. Yeah. It's kind of the point. Yeah, you don't, I never get back. to wear them. So shit, I might as well break them out <laughs> for this. I never wear, I haven't worn, I haven't put that thing on in four years, probably. So you just hide them away. Is that kind of the deal? You ever take yeah. them out and look at them? No, I just got to go pick them up at the, deposit you know the safety oh deposit i gotcha box. all right they're hit away or whatever all right yeah now you obviously follow the giants closely this year they have a return to winning football which i know all of you guys as former giants alumni are really proud of finally seeing this team after five long miserable years of just Brutal. being one of the worst teams in football what a return to form what did you like most about the brian dable joe shane giants in year one what did i like the most um I just think there was a camaraderie about that team that was really apparent watching them play. They all cared about each other. Um, and I didn't get that feel with Joe Judge and some of the other coaches that they had. And um, it felt like it was fun. It looked like the guys had fun going to work. And they really brought in some nice pieces. I just think the coaching and coaching was better. Dave is obviously a player's coach. They bought into what he was selling. And yeah. That's a big deal. I mean, I think, you know, people ask me all the time about those Super Bowl teams I was on. And I tell people, I said, look, it's all about the NFL. The team who wins the Super Bowl is about the team that comes together the most. Like, throw all your egos outside. 
come together. We're all in this together. The, the teams that gel the quickest, and certainly they were void of some talent in some places, but overall they were, I think people will agree, they were just fun to watch. Yeah, no doubt about it. And obviously now they've given Daniel Jones a four-year deal, which is really remarkable. I mean, to have declined his option, becoming the first quarterback to have an option decline, then come back and get a long-term deal since these fifth-year options have happened is pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. They are now working, obviously, to kind of build the offense around him. Adding Darren Waller was an enormous kind of splash move for the Giants. Where do you stand on Daniel having won two Super Bowls with Eli Manning, that calm demeanor-type quarterback that Daniel Jones is kind of a light version of here? Uh, you know, how do you feel about Daniel Jones getting this deal and, and being the, you know, the long-term face as it stands right now? I've always liked it. I've always backed him. I, I've believed in him from day one. And, and certainly the, the Giants obviously believe in him. They paid him handsomely. Uh, I'm on record as saying that's what he was going to get. So I can say, I told you so Giants <laughs> nation. I said that in January, he was going to get 40 million a year. Some people will say it's not 40 million a year, but who cares? Um, we all know why he struggled in the past, right? And he and still they have not fixed the offensive line entirely yet, but I just think the play calling helped helped him last year quite a bit. He just does everything the right way, right? He 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 doesn't ever have bad bad, bad body language, can't even talk. Um he plays hard, he plays hurt, he's tough, he's physical, he can throw, he can make every throw. You put the right people around him, I think the sky's the limit for him. I mean, he's 25 years old and he started four seasons in the NFL. I mean, that's that's pretty incredible. He's got a lot of growing to do. This is not the final product of Daniel Jones. Everyone wants to judge. You know, contracts are given for future performance, not past. Right. You know, yeah, you're paying for they are. You think They're given for dumb. future performance, and that's why the Giants paid him. And listen, in, in, in a year, 18 months from now, Daniel Jones is going to be the 15th to 20th highest paid quarterback in the game. So every year, the, a new quarterback sets the market or gets overpaid, and that's the position, if you look at it throughout Giants history. You have to overpay at that position. That's just a fact. You obviously have been around a, a different variety of tight ends in your career. You were in Kansas City with Gonzalez, right? Or am oh, yeah. I misremembering mm -hmm. it? Okay. Oh, yeah. So you had that. You were, when you first came to the Giants, obviously Jeremy Shockey was there before he got hurt. And then we talk about, you know, Kevin Boss and Jake Ballard and guys like that throughout their uh, Giants tenure. When they had a guy like Darren Waller, I mean, this was an offseason we all approached that the Giants need a number one wide receiver. They need a number one wide receiver. Instead, as it's Stan, we'll see what they do on draft night. They go and they add the big playmaking tight end, one of the top three tight ends in terms of that kind of ability. Uh, what do you think that's enough of a difference, plus some of the other stuff they did to kind of elevate Daniel Jones now and take it to the next level? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, in the, you know, the, Bellinger getting hurt with the, the orbital injury in Jacksonville last yeah. year really set him back because he was on pace to to keep producing and getting better. And, you know, Travis Kelsey, take this for what you what it is, thinks he was probably one of the best tight ends he saw at the tight end U camp thing last year where they right. came. He likes Bellinger a lot. So that's that's high praise coming from Travis Kelsey. So you that's what Santa you, brought me this year, LT. I got a Daniel like, Bellinger jersey in the closet. Yeah. That was Santa's big gift. And so you get him and um uh, what's his name? The tight end. What you're just talking about? Uh, Darren Waller, right? Darren, Darren Waller. Waller sorry. Yeah. Um, that's going to be so the Waller and Bellinger. A tight end is usually a quarterback's best friend, and so, um, it's it's going to be you know, Dave's and, and Kafka. Kafka's brilliant. They're they're going to put together a plan, um, and and they'll figure out how to how to use how to best use those guys. That's what it comes out to. Now, another thing I wanted to ask you about in the locker room, you were in a locker room with Strahan and a bunch of other characters as well. Last year, Kayvon Thibodeau, as we mentioned, that was the big part of draft night, gets drafted in the first round. He has a really good rookie year, and I think we all kind of think he's going to ascend into that like ultimate star level as a pass rusher. But forget his ability on the field. He faced some backlash this year. I mentioned the Snow Angels thing he did when Nick Foles was on the ground, which I don't blame him for. He was celebrating a sack. Yeah. But he's got a little bit of that, like, uh, FU attitude that I think the Giants have missed with some of their players over the last few years, where, like, they don't care. They got a little swag. One of those guys you love to have on your team would probably hate to face him. Do you think that every locker room needs a little bit of an a-hole on the field that the other team hates? Oh, absolutely. You got to have one of those guys. You know, Jihad Ward's another one. Yeah, he um, is. Yes, he man, is. I, I love that dude. I never met him. Don't know him personally, but I just kind of love how he gives zero. You know what? Um, I, I, I think every locker room needs a Kayvon Thibodeau, Jihad Ward. They they kind of bring that culture together um, and kind of say things that people, everyone's thinking. So obviously we had Antrell Roll. 
uh, Brandon true. Jacobs. Uh, so we kind of had a couple of them, Ahmad Bradshaw at times. But, um, yeah, I think you got to have a guy like that. All right, Tanj, before we let you go, and thanks again for joining One Giant Step. As you know, Giant fans like to travel. They travel well. We've seen them in big road games. There will be Giant fans flocking to Kansas City to check out the NFL draft, as there always are. You mm-hmm. mentioned sticking around. Your wife had to stick around in Kansas City. You know me as a food guy. What's the best go-to barbecue that a Lawrence Times recommends for anybody coming into town for this draft? Man, you got to go to Joe's. Um, so the so the original is a gas station, like, and they'll run right. out of food by like certain things at like one o'clock. So, but there are there is a restaurant over in on the Kansas side, like Leewood, Kansas, Overland Park, kind of where I live. It's about 20, 30 minutes from downtown. You want to go to Joe's Barbecue in Leewood, um, and you want to get the burn ends. You definitely want to get the burn ends, and then you want to get the red beans and rice. I mean, listen, you can't go wrong with any of it, but any barbecue place you go to in Kansas City, you're going to be just fine. Everyone's got their little nuances that are different. Joe's is my personal favorite. But again, Q39 is is kind of an upscale place if you want to do dinner. With That's like the newer one. trendy place, right? Yeah, huh? like I, I kind of like the grungy garage, nasty. You know, Arthur Bryant's, my buddy actually just <laughs> bought that. Um, Arthur Bryant's has been around for almost 100 years. Presidents have been there. That's really downtown. That's where they'll throw your food on you, say, hey, get out of here. I mean, that's how they talk to you, but it's that's old school Kansas City barbecue. But every place is oh. good. Meet Mitch. Meet Mitch is another place. Man, I could go on and on. There's just tons of them. Yeah, I don't think you can go to the NFL draft in Kansas City and not just be covered and slathered in barbecue sauce smelling like burnt ends just by the beautiful. end of it, man. Yeah, probably the most disappointing part of me not going to the NFL draft this year. I got to be honest, because you'd probably I'd probably look like one of the pigs, honestly, just, you know, rolling out of the <laughs> an apple in my mouth. And be that whole, be that whole you're thing. Just, you're just, I can look I like Dave. Picture you, it. you're like, you're like on that thing that turns very slowly <laughs> with the apple. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I have the pink cheeks for it oh, as geez. well. All right, so That's look for him on Friday night uh, in two weeks, round two of the NFL draft. As we hope the Giants don't trade back, so Times can yeah. make that pick Could and be ready to go. Oh, by the way, I, I did. Maybe you don't know the answer to this. But in the off chance that the Giants trade out of the first round and basically pick up two second round picks, would you remain in that second Hmm. pick or would you jump up and, you know, because you could, in theory, make their first selection? You could. Uh, So as far as I understand it, I don't have the full itinerary right now. It's going to be based off of like TV breaks and commercials, like when they're going to add like maybe because sometimes they'll just announce the pick. Right. It'll say prior. You get a little. But right. Knowing that I'm going to be there, I'm sure. Not that they'll change the whole damn broadcast for me, but I'm going to be there. I'm supposed to announce pick 57. If it becomes pick, you know, 42, if we do a trade or something like that, then that has not been outlined yet. But I'll find out more, I guess, as the week uh, progresses. All right. You can follow times at LT four kicks. Again, check them out announcing the Giants second round pick in the NFL draft. One we hope. You know, maybe produces a little more than Wandell Robinson was able to this year. Looking for long, healthy careers out of some of these draft picks as we get excited here. Times Lawrence, thank you. Times Lawrence, Lawrence Times, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Have fun. Enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Congrats on the show. Thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. If you want to see more of our videos, be sure to check out our playlist and let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media to stay up to date on our latest updates. Links are all in the description. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. One giant step.